Hugh, great of you to join us. I just want to get your views as to how the European debt situation is playing out today. We do have uh, uh, Angela Merkel and Nicolas Sarkozy saying they're confident they can resolve everything in three, three well, everything in three weeks. Do you buy this? Um, I'm afraid not. Of course, uh, they're politicians and they have to say it's uh, going to be okay and that they have the solutions. But uh, I'm afraid the solution is going to be a, a, a long, hard one over, frankly, probably uh, many years. So, so we, we don't buy it, I'm afraid. Right, but also things are getting even more complicated. We had downgrades for various European countries over the weekend. We've got uh, a situation at Dexia, a news conference going on right now, 3 a.m. local time in Belgium. Uh, it uh, does seem that, that things are gaining momentum in the wrong way. Hmm. Well, we have, yes, and maybe things have to get worse uh, before they get better, or people have to realize the reality, because uh, uh, one mustn't forget that I think Dexia passed uh, recent stress tests uh, that, uh, of course, the market and the world thought were nonsense to begin with. Um, and reality is catching up quickly, which is ultimately a good thing, because we do get nearer the solution, but uh, it's not going to be without pain. Indeed. What could be the fallout from uh, Dexia and uh, the, the problems it has and indeed the reorganization? I believe they could break it up. Mm. Well, it sounds as though it uh, will be broken up, um, which is quite important to us since we do have a relationship actually in a small part of our business with RBC Dexia. Uh, on the registrar business. Um, so uh, I'm guessing, and um, certainly the uh, announcements are such that the governments will stand behind it, uh, but then we'll split up the business into its various component parts. Uh, we wait yes. and see what the news conference will bring. Right, well, let's just talk about the impact in this part of the world. I've seen gains for equity markets. It looks like, uh, to start with today, we may have had all these downgrades for European countries. It looks like, though, investors are taking the view that uh, the glass is, is half full. Well, in this part of the world, in a sense, it, it, it is half full, or, or, or I would argue more than half full. Um, uh, countries are, are in good shape here. Uh, companies, most importantly, have extremely strong balance sheets, and uh, even forecasting flat earnings, maybe even 10% down earnings for the next year or two, uh, which uh, is a worst-case assumption, I think, uh, markets look very reasonably valued. But, uh, but at the moment, we are in the eye of the storm with lots of fear from a macro point of view uh, from the West. Uh, and on a day-to-day -day basis, that's hitting these markets. But for people like us as long-term investors, if anything, it's giving opportunities and uh, making one a little more excited over valuations in particular. Yeah, Hugh, uh, I mean, of course, the bulk of your fund, as you would expect, is uh, in Asia. Have you changed things around at all in terms of your asset allocation in, this, uh, in these volatile times? Uh, not really. If anything, at the margin, what we've done is take a little off the top of um, some of the utilities that have held up well and have been uh, topping up uh, primarily some of the financials that have been dragged down with the West but still look uh, a totally different story from that of the West. Um, strong banks here in Singapore, the likes of OCBC, UOB, uh, yes, we'll uh, not, not be having an easy year, uh, but have extremely strong balance sheets. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just looking at your top, uh, top five holdings. You just mentioned OCBC, but you've got Jardine Strategic. You've been reducing holdings at Rio Tinto is another one. Samsung as well came out with those uh, stellar earnings last week. So do you add more to them as uh, we've seen these shares beaten down? Uh, uh, yes, yes, we have been. You, know, you correctly mentioned we, we top sliced a tiny amount of Jardines uh, the other day. Nothing wrong with the company. Simply it's a, a very large holding for us and has done jolly well. Um, uh, the other holdings we've been happy topping up as and where uh, they're a bit light in various portfolios. So, yes, I think you do close your eyes, but um, don't be surprised if you see prices down another 20%. Uh, that's the nature of markets. But I think for the true long-term investor, you're getting some great, well-run businesses with uh, strong cash flow and decent dividends uh, at uh, quite low prices.
So, I mean, it's about the long-term story, isn't it? I mean, you're buying, uh, as you say, it's a buy-and-hold strategy, and uh, uh, a year from now, these, these, uh, the hope is that these equities are going to look dirt cheap. Uh, yes, yes, it might be a painful year, I agree. And, and, and many of those names you've, uh, you've mentioned we, we've held for the last ten or more years. Uh, so we've held them through uh, times that have been a lot, lot tougher. The, the Asian crisis was a lot tougher for the local banks than today's crisis is.